All right guys, today we're gonna to cover the subject of the pros and cons of taking up sprinting as a sport. to the High Performance Podcast. How good is this? Obviously, I'm a bit biased as I am a sprinter and I have been doing it for the past three years, but I thought I'd really think about it and dig in, right in, to give you guys an idea of my thoughts of the pros and cons of taking up sprinting as a sport. Okay, so what do I mean as a sport? So for me, sprinting is something I do competitively in the summer. I race the gift races. You can see, I'll put a link in the bio for what that is. Um, they run sort of let's say September to April. So I'm competing all throughout those and all year round, bar sort of two weeks and then when I'm sick and run down, I run three times a week, twice with a coach, once on myself, obviously under his program. So that's what I mean by taking up sprinting as a sport. So for me, my other parts of my training are, I lift weights twice a week and then if you guys follow us on Instagram at the High Performance Podcast, you'll see I also dunk on a Thursday. So usually the first session I'll drop if I'm run down or too fatigued is the dunking session. So my weight sessions in summer are predominantly for power and sort of injury prevention, that sort of thing. And in winter, I go for more of the strength side of things to try and build up my strength phase. So that is what entails my training. And that's what I consider as an amateur taking part in sprinting as a sport. So we'll go through five pros and then five cons. So the first pro for me is it keeps you in really good shape. So I came from an endurance sport background. I was always the classic endurance sport mold. So for guys who are in Australia, you'll know the sport Ironman. And again, if you follow us at the High Performance Podcast on Instagram, throughout the podcast, I would have broken that down. Maybe I'll do that in another video for our American viewers. So basically I was always that skinny, sort of a lot of swimming, so sort of broad shoulders. And so the first pro I would say is body shape. So you see sprinters, they're quite muscular, quite lean. I found when I started sprinting, obviously the weightlifting and a lot of leg weights go along with it. I put on about seven kilos of mass over the three years that I've been doing it. And I haven't had a DEXA scan because I got a DEXA scan at the end of sort of my swimming career before I started sprinting. And I want to get another DEXA scan now, three or four years on, I think it's been, to see how my body shapes change. I'll throw up on the screen now my progress. So from the swimming days towards the end of my swimming and Ironman career to where I am now. I saw a recent photo that was taken two months ago and I'm in similar shape. The next would be practical transfer to sport. So this hasn't impacted me as I don't play any team sports. Obviously it has helped me with jumping and dunking, but for the average guy who is looking to incorporate sprinting, it'll have great transfer across the field sports. So I train with my training partners can attest to that and they come back to training over the years with stories of how it's really helped them. Some of them are professional, some of them are not professional and it works across the board. A lot of guys will get quicker, especially that late in the game speed. Again, obviously coming from a predominantly water sport as a kid through my teenage years and also as a young adult, um, swimming can be quite cold in the winter months, even off Sydney. So obviously even training in winter, I laugh at my teammates when it's 10 a.m., slight subleys up and it's been a bit rainy and they're cold. Anywhere we get to train in jumpers, long tights, anything beats paddling your ocean kayak, offshore, howling subly when it's like under 10 degrees in the middle of winter. Also jumping into a cold pool in winter. So I would say the next pro is it's quite a warm sport, even in winter, even when it's raining and you're training outdoor. The next is price. All you really need if you sort of don't want to compete, you don't really need blocks. You just want to get the fitness physique side out of sprinting is maybe a pair of spikes, a pair of flats to warm up in, tights, shorts, anything. You don't even have to wear specific shorts. You can just wear everyday gym shorts. And I always just wear old singlets that I don't really want to wear out and about anymore. So that's my training gear. And the last pro for me is it puts how good professional track athletes are at running and how much you have to be blessed with genetics, train hard, stay injury free, all that stuff applies. Like training for three years, I've gone from probably running 12 high to maybe like my best fully automatic time would be about 11.6, but that was over a gift race over slightly more meters. So that's calculated and rounded up to 100. Um, my best hand times on track has been an 11.3. 
So I've dropped about one and a half seconds, which may not sound like a lot, but in the sprinting world it is. And that's me, I feel like maybe my best. Maybe I might get down to 11 flat hand timed over the years, but still you gotta be lucky with injuries. Obviously I'm got to work full time, host a podcast, do all that sort of stuff. So I can only allocate so much time to it, but yeah, definitely puts how good professional athletes are in perspective and how far ahead Usain Bolt is of you, from you and how far you are ahead of the average person. So there are my five pros for sprinting. Here are my five cons. So number one for the cons is I find it can be quite hard to monitor training load. And what I mean by this is, I guess it's when you're new to any sport, even when you have a coach, sprinting is very specific to you personally. So it's a bit of trial and error with what you can handle and what you can't handle. And part of that, and make that process easier, sorry, is to have a good coach, which I'm lucky enough to, and he can sort of personalize the squads program to specific athletes, so me included. So sometimes I find I can handle more load than sort of the CNS stuff. So I can handle more of the longer sort of sprints than I can the shorter sprints with longer rest. And I assume that's just from my training background and maybe I'll start to slowly adapt the other way as you go. So training load and training volume and sort of figuring out where you need to be with weights, sprinting, all that sort of stuff can be quite tricky. And while I don't look at it as a con, the average person that starts sprinting might find that is a bit of a con. And the reason I say that is because it moves on to our next one, which is injury. So obviously overtraining um, can lead to injuries. Sometimes injuries just happen in track of field with muscle imbalances. But you can also take a pro out of that, which would be learning about your body. Um, I've had surgery, which was quite expensive. Lucky my girlfriend's a podiatrist because she helped me diagnose that. I had a bone spur in the back of my heel. It was called an ostrigonum. Apparently fracturing that is quite common in ballerinas and people who are on their toes a lot or on the balls of their feet a lot, obviously sprinting. But I think part of that was being unlucky. Some people don't have these and also being an idiot. I had a long drive straight after a meet, got in the car, drove for four hours on the Sunday and then stupidly trained on the Monday and did some bounds and then shit happens. Also, the cost of that surgery is quite dear, which leads me to my next one, which is price. So I know I said price as a pro, it can also be a con when you have injuries, physios, you want to stay on top of massage, you want to get a good coach, pay trainers, you want to have the latest spikes, gym membership, it can add up. So sprinting can either be one end of the scale on price or it can be the other end of the scale when it comes to price. The next is plateaus. So. Although this probably happens in every sport, I think it does happen more with sprinting because there are really only two to three disciplines that you'll participate in. Um, whilst one might get better, quite a lot you go through a plateau, which moves on to the next con is you're asked why a lot. Why aren't I getting better? Why aren't I Usain Bolt? I'm putting in the effort. Sometimes it's more than that. Again, it goes back to what I was saying about tweaking training and personalizing training, which I hope takes years. Well, I wish it didn't take years, but it'll take years to sort of figure out, which again can be a pro because some people might enjoy the fact that you do have to come across all those hurdles to break through plateaus. But for me, I like to see progress. I am quite impatient, so plateaus are a con of sprinting for me. All right, that's five cons. So there are my five pros, five cons of sprinting. Tried to make it a bit unbiased. Obviously my cons and pros can be a bit mix match each way you can look at it as a pro you can look at it as a con let me know what you guys think make sure you check out our podcast we have interviewed a lot of sprinters we have interviewed a lot of coaches revolving around sprinting and if you guys want to know how to get involved in sprinting just post in the comments below and i should be able to help you guys out with finding a coach giving you some advice to head in the right direction <laughs>